between the backbone and the ribs. Today we have come to know the genital organs, the testes in the males and the ovaries in the female. In the embryonic age, they develop from a space where the kidney is present today between the backbone and the 11th and 12th rib. Later on, the testes, the descent through the inguinal colon into the scrotum and the ovaries in the female to the true pelvis. But in the embryonic age, it's in the space where the Quran speaks about between the backbone, the spinal column, and the 11th and 12th rib. Even in the adult life, after the genital organ the descent, yet they receive the blood supply, the nerve supply, and the lymphatic drainage from the same space between the spinal column and the 11th and 12th rib. The Holy Quran mentions in Surah Mu'minun, chapter 23, verse number 13, as well as in Surah Al-Hajj, chapter 22, verse number 5, that we have created the human beings from anutfa. The Arabic word nutfa, that the human beings have been created from nutfa, is mentioned in the Quran no less than 11 times. And the word nutfa is mentioned 12 times. But human beings created from nutfa is mentioned 11 times. The Arabic word nutfa means a minute quantity of liquid. The Holy Quran says, in Surah Sajda, chapter 32, verse number 8, that we have created the human beings from a quintessence of liquid. The Arabic word is sulala, meaning a minute quantity or the best part of the whole. And today we have come to know only one sperm actually it penetrates the ovum. And only one sperm is required to fertilize the ovum out of the tens of millions of sperms which the man ejaculates. Quran refers to it as solala, the best part of the whole, or nutfa, a minute quantity. The Quran says in Surah Insan, chapter 76, verse number 2, Inna khalakna insana min nutfatin amshaj. The Arabic word means, nutfatin amshaj, means we have created the human being from a minute quantity of mingled fluids. Nutfatan amsaj. Minute quantity of mingled fluid. This can refer to the male and female gametes after they form the zygote. It yet remains a nutfa, a minute quantity of liquid. It can also refer to the spermatic fluid, which contains several secretions from various glands, like the testes, the serofluid, which contains the spermatozoons. It also includes the secretion from the seminal vesicles, the seminal fluids, which is a reservoir of spermatozoons, but does not contain the fertilizing agent. Also, it refers to the secretion of the prostatic glands, which gives the creamy texture and the characteristic odor to the sperm, as well as glands attached to the urinary tract, the Cooper's gland or the Litter's gland which gives the specific texture of mucus to the sperm. The Quran refers to as nutfatan amshaj, minute quantity of mingled fluid. Male and female gametes surrounded by these fluids which are responsible for the birth of the human being. The Holy Quran says in Surah Al-Zumur, chapter 39, verse number 6, we have created the human beings in the wombs of their mother, in stages, one after the other, in three waves of darkness. Professor Keith Moore said, these three waves of darkness refers to the anterior abdominal wall of the mother, the uterine wall, and the amniocorionic membrane. The Quran also speaks about genetics. The Quran says, in Surah Najam, chapter 53, verse number 45 and 46, that we have created the human beings and made them into male and female from a minute quantity of liquid which is ejaculated. But naturally, if it's ejaculated, it has to be a male fluid. Quran says it is the male which is responsible for the sex of the child. The Quran repeats this message in Surah Qiyamah, 
chapter 75, verse number 37 to 39, that we have created the human beings from a minute quantity of sperm and then made it into an alaka, a leech-like substance, then gave it due proportion, then made it into sex, male and female. The Arabic word, nutfatam, min mani yumna, means a minute quantity of sperm. Quran says a minute quantity of sperm is required for sex of the child. Today science has come to know that the sex of the child depends upon the 23rd pair of chromosomes. And it is the sperm which is responsible for deciphering the sex of the child. If it's X, X, it's a female. If it's an XY, it's a male. Quran has mentioned this 1400 years ago. In our society, especially in the Indian society, for reasons known best to them, people prefer having a male child. And suppose the daughter-in-law, if she gives birth to a female child, the mother-in-law normally blames the daughter-in-law. If the mother-in-law has to blame anyone, she should blame the son, not the daughter-in-law. Because the Holy Quran and science tells us that it is the male which is responsible for the sex of the child and not the female. The Quran describes the various embryological stages in great detail. In Surah Mu'minun, chapter 23, verse number 12 to 14, it says, We have created the human beings from a quintessence of clay, then made it into a drop, placed it into Kararim Makin, place of security, then made it into an alaka, something which clings, a leech like substance made that alaka into mudga, a chewed like lump, made that mudga into izama, bones, then clothed the izama, bones, with lahem, that is flesh, and then made it into a creature. Blessed is he, the best to create. This verse of the Holy Quran from 12 to 14 of Surah Mu'minun, chapter 23, describes the embryological stages in great detail. It starts with saying, we have placed the nutfa, the minute quantity, into kararim makin, a place of security. Today, embryology tells us that the embryo is protected posteriorly by the backbone and the posterior muscles of the mother, anteriorly by the anterior abdominal wall, by the uterine wall, as well as the amniocodonic membrane. It continues. Then we made it into an alaka, a leech-like substance, something which clings. The Arabic word alaka has got three meanings. Something which clings, a leech-like substance, as well as blood clot. Alhamdulillah, all three meanings are applicable here. Because the embryo, in the initial stages, it clings to the uterine wall of the mother. It looks like a leech, as confirmed by Professor Keith Moore. It also behaves like a leech. It behaves like a blood sucker. It derives the blood supply and the nutrition from the mother. And at this stage, if an abortion takes place, the concept is it looks like a blood clot. It looks like a blood clot as well as a leech. So Quran, in one word, it implies three meanings which all are applicable. Quran mentions this word alaka no less than six times. Twice in Surah Mu'minun, chapter 23, verse number 12 to 14. Surah Hajj, chapter 22, verse number 5. Surah Ghafir, chapter number 40, verse 67. Surah Qiyamah, chapter 75, verse 38. As well as in Surah Ikra, chapter 96, verse number 2. Six times it's mentioned. Previously, in the 17th century, people thought that the sperm, it evolved a miniature human being. A miniature human being was present in the head of the sperm, which later on developed into the uterus of the mother as a newborn baby. This was believed by Swammer Dam, who proposed the perforation theory. Later on, when they discovered that the ovum is bigger than the sperm, D. Graf and others, they said, it is not the sperm which was a miniature human being, it is the ovum which was a miniature human being. Later on, Mao Paratis, in the 18th century, he proposed the biparental theory. That both are responsible, as the Quran says. Both the sperm and the ovum is responsible for the birth of the child. 
Quran says, we made that alaka into a mudga. Mudga means chewed like lump or something tacky which can be put in the mouth. So Professor Keith Moore said, both these meanings are applicable because it is something tacky which can be put in the mouth. And later on, he took a plaster seal and bit it between his teeth to look like a mudga, a chewed like lump. And he was astonished that the teeth marks resembled the somites from which develops the spinal column. The Quran says, we made that mudga into izaman, bones. We clothed the izaman with lahem, flesh and muscles. Allah says then, we create the al-nasha stage. We create a new creature. What does the Quran mean we have created a new creature? Sashri tells us that the embryological stages of development, before this stage, in the rabbit, in the fish, in the other animals, it's similar to that of the human being. It's only at this stage of al-nasha that the particular characteristics of the human beings are seen, the head, the hands and the feet. So Quran says we have made a new creature and ends by saying blessed is he who is the best to create. Imagine, Quran gives the various embryological stages in great detail. There was a person who put forward an argument. It's nothing new. Maybe some Arab, he opened up the abdomen of a pregnant woman and checked the shape and wrote in the Quran. He didn't realize that all these stages which the Quran describes, it cannot be observed with a naked human eye. You require a very powerful microscope. When Professor Marshall Johnson was asked to comment on these verses, he is the head of the Department of Anatomy in the Daniel Institute in Jefferson's Hospital in Philadelphia, USA. He said, it can be possible that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he had a microscope and he observed it. Then he was reminded that microscope was not invented 400 years ago. So Professor Marshall Johnson laughed loudly and he said, yes, I know that. And I've seen the first microscope with my own eyes. It hardly enlarges to 10 times and the picture is not even clear. Then he said, these stages has to be a divine revelation. We are further asked to comment on the verse of the Quran from Surah Al-Hajj, chapter 22, verse number 5, which says, We have created the human beings from dust, then made it into an alaqa, then made it into a mudga, partly formed and partly unformed. When you take an incision at this stage and analyze the embryo, and cut up the internal organs, we'll find out that the internal organs at this particular stage, some of the organs are formed, while the other organs, they aren't formed. So Professor Marshall Johnson said, if I said that it is a complete creation, I'm only describing those organs which are formed. If I say it's an incomplete creation, I'm only describing those organs which are not formed. There can be no better description than the Holy Quran saying partly formed and partly unformed, because some organs are formed, the others are not formed. Some cells are differentiated, the others are not differentiated. Professor Keith Moore said that today in embryology, we have got several stages of the embryological development. But it is so difficult to understand it because it has got numerical stages. Stage 1, stage 2, stage 3. The Quran bases the stages on shapes and prenatal development, which is far superior and easy than what modern embryology has done today. If the embryologists, they describe according to the stage of the Quran, it's far more easier for them to describe and understand than what modern embryology has done, stage one, stage two, stage three.